Welcome. In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to set your C and D lines appropriately for, for when you evaluate a excursive movement. Now the reason we want to do this is there's some information that suggests that when a person has a long disclusion time, meaning from the movement's origin, which would be located at C, which is the beginning of the patient moving, in this case, a left lateral into a left lateral excursion, the time between the origin and the completion of the excursion should be short, and actually it should be less than 0.49 seconds. If we open our timing table here, we can get a quick identification of where we are between C and D. Uh, currently, uh, you can see that the C1, D1 lines show a difference between about 0.75 seconds. Ideally, we would like this D line to be closer, which you can see that a green check mark occurs, which would imply that the patient's excursive movement um, does not have as many interferences, which can cause challenges during the excursion. All right, and so the timing table is a good tool to identify where you're at, um, and vice versa, knowing that the D line uh, in this case was all the way out here, we can quickly identify that um, the patient may be having some challenges and they might not be telling you in the chair. So it's a good way to um, begin that conversation, even if they're not bringing it up. Okay, so I want to talk about setting the C to D lines. Uh, many times the computer will put a, will do a very good job of setting them, but you know, people like to be as accurate as possible. So what we recommend is uh, when you get an excursion is go up to view, go to arch in quadrants. We want to click at the maximum intercuspative area and you want to identify the side you're sliding to, in this case left, and we want to make sure that the uh, horizontal bar here specific to the left is behind tooth number 11, which would be the canine. Sometimes you just click on it and you can adjust it. And this will adjust the lines in the graph because the yellow is representative of your left, and left posterior, blue is your right posterior. All right, and so when we want to set the, the C line, it's the, you want to move the C line to the point where all the colors start to move away from each other. And you can see it's actually in a good spot right now which is a testament to the software. And I can zoom in here, um, clicking the zoom feature, just do a square around the C to D area. And you can really see the C line is exactly where it needs to be. So the computer, as normal, will do a great job of this. But if it wasn't, you can move it slightly to the left or right of that location. Same thing with the D line, but it's a little bit different in regards to we're looking for uh, the D line to be placed where the yellow and blue lines hit zero. And the idea behind this is we look for immediate posterior disclusion, and so you're not discluded until the posterior teeth are completely at zero. And so you can see here, if you look closely, and you can probably zoom in more to get a better, more clarity, the yellow line kind of hovers and it hits zero right about here. So we can actually take the D line and move it about a half an inch. All right, and there you go. That would be setting your C to D lines. And then from here, you would click C and you would walk through the movie looking for the bite pattern. That's a nice direct smooth to 11. Otherwise, like in this case, there might be some adjustments needed. If you have any additional questions, you can contact TechScan or you can go to our online website and look for additional resources and our videos are available. Thank you and have a good day.